Hi, I'm Dr. Mahreed Wibbeling, midwife specialist and your host of the Birth and Baby Show, brought to you by Sister Lillian Center and Sensitive Midwifery. We empower moms and midwives to have the best birthing and parenting experience through natural, physiological and intuitive care, resulting in birth and baby advice you can trust. Hi there, welcome back to another episode for the Birth and Baby Advice You Can Trust show. And the headline of this episode is Butts versus Bumps, a battle we can't afford to lose. Well, you might be wondering what that is all about. Um, I'm sure you're in for a treat. I'll be talking to Dr. Kieran McLeod, and um, he is a very interesting young um, entrepreneur, a South African medical doctor, and a founder of Baigwai. So he has been drawing on his passion for behavior change and digital health and founded a mobile app-based smoking cessation solution called Pai Guai. This is an evidence-based, easy to access and affordable program to help South Africans quit smoking. Hope you will enjoy this episode. Hi, Kieran. I am so excited to be on this podcast with you today. How are you doing? Oh, very well. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Margrethe. It's, it's really great to, to be here. Um, yeah, been very much looking forward to this and, and keen to, to obviously have a chat with you about um, obviously Sister Lillian's sensor, uh, sensitive midwifery and obviously relating that back to, uh, to smoking uh, and pregnancy. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. Yeah, you're so welcome. Yeah, we've indeed been talking quite a lot already. So there's so much um, synergy and how we can work together. I really believe in um, in what you are busy doing. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and your journey as a doctor and what you're all up to. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, so I, I, I studied medicine at, at UCT um, and I've spent most of my sort of clinical career working uh, in emergency medicine and, and COVID-19 uh, over the last couple of years, um, and I think you know during that that time I you know was trying to kind of work out what you know where my interests were, what my passions were, and kind of realized that you know somewhere between healthcare, um, behavioral science, and and technology was a a good place to be. Um, and you know I, I think I just realized that in you know in clinical medicine. Uh, I wasn't really able to make as as much of a, an impact as I would like. Um, I think you can probably relate to that as well. You know, when you're working as a midwife, it's just sort of one on one. Um, and I think you know, when you work in an organisation like the Sister Lillian Centre, where our impact is is, is so much more um, than just you know what we're having on the patient in front of us, uh, that kind of really inspired me to to get into to digital health. Um, and then from there, that was where I. Uh, founded by Guai, which is a, a mobile app-based smoking cessation program. Um, and obviously we, we're keen to try and, uh, I guess, take that, 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 that app and that program and, you know, make as big an impact as, as possible. And I think there's no doubt that, that helping pregnant women, uh, their growing babies, uh, you know, their families and social circles is a, a real opportunity there. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about my, my health background and how I managed to, to come, uh, I guess, to, to meet you and, and to be working yeah. on this project. Yeah, awesome. No, I, I'm really impressed by your unique um, combination, which is actually so relevant for these time times, is being a medical doctor and being totally in that space and also having a tech brain. That's a quite a beautiful combination you've been gifted with and um, what you're doing with that is beautiful. So um, you um, you got onto the whole smoking pandemic let's call it that because it's still it's big People it is very much a pandemic <laughs> yeah right and we we sometimes <laughs> just stop talking about it because it's we've just also become accustomed with it um how did you jump onto this smoking pandemic and and what are you doing with it and what's currently going on in the with the smoking world sure. there? So, yeah, I, I mean, I completely agree with you. I think smoking's kind of become one of those boring subjects to talk about because, you know, as you say, stop the record. We've been hearing this for 50 years. Uh, you know, yeah. we don't need to know that, that smoking's bad for us. We already know that. Um, but, yeah, to, to, I guess to, to give some, some background, um, I, I was never really a, a real smoker myself. Uh, I smoked uh, socially when I was at Varsity. Um, but but my mom was a smoker for 
more than sort of the first half of my life. And yeah, I, I saw how much she, she struggled to, to quit smoking. And, you know, she tried uh, gum patches, hypnosis, acupuncture, you name it, she tried it. Um, and she eventually managed to, to, to quit. Um, but it was after, you know, a couple of years of, of trying. Um, and I just realized that, you know, we need something um, or we need a program, something that's structured that can actually help people quit rather than them spending months or years trying to find a solution that works for them. Um, but to go back to your point about the, the smoking pandemic, uh, again, I think a lot of people think that, you know, smoking's, smoking's on the out and, you know, vaping's on the rise and that's what we should be worried about. Um, but interestingly, so in South Africa in 2016, we had about 8 million tobacco users, um, which represented about 20% of the adult population. Um, and we thought, oh, cool, we're, we're heading in the right direction. Um, and then they did another study in, in 2021, um, which again looked at South Africans, and suddenly we were up to 13 million tobacco users and about 30% of the adult population. And that's pretty substantial increase over a five-year period, especially when we had a, a tobacco sales ban and obviously the COVID pandemic as well. Um, and that, I think, was a little bit of an alarm signal for me to say that, look, this is not something that we can ignore. Uh, we really need to, to make an effort to try and, and do something, um, you know, focus on prevention and health promotion rather than down the line when you're having a uh, chest pain or uh, you've got COPD or emphysema, you know, 20 years down the line. Yeah, fantastic. I'm sure as a doctor, that's also why you become so rather excited and passionate about prevention because you see the sometimes the worst of the worst. And the same as, as midwives, we very much are so passionate about preventing before it is all, yeah, go haywire. Um, but before we go into mm -hmm. that, um, I was reading a blog mm -hmm. on, on your website, the Baigwai website uh, on um, uh, 2023, Be Free, <laughs> really nicely written, but it was actually saying mm -hmm. um, that, um, what was the stats? I think, um, yeah, there's so many people that are actually wanting to quit smoking as a New Year's resolution, and 80% of them never never yeah. actually make it. So there's there's a lot of people wanting to quit, but I just don't manage to quit. So talk a little bit about that, quitting and smoking and what you've learned in your journey and what works and what doesn't work. So, so look, I, I think, well, I'm glad to see that somebody is at least reading the blog posts on our website. I never know if those things are just being sent out into the internet and, you know, nobody ever reads them except for maybe a, a Google search crawler or something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, so, so something like 34 or 35% of smokers who, who make New Year's resolutions uh, have quitting smoking as, as one of their New Year's resolutions. Um, but but the sad thing is is that you know of those people who who would attempt to 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 quit something like 80 percent of them will fail you know within a month of trying um and, and that that for me is a little bit concerning because i know how difficult it is to keep you know any new year's resolution uh, i know my new year's resolution has been to be uh getting out and running a little bit more um, and i still haven't been as good as i i would have liked to have been on that um but yeah, I, I think what we, we need to do is we need to take advantage of these opportunities to create change, okay, or to say, look, this, this is the right time for you to, to make a change, you know, to, to quit smoking, to, to cut down on smoking. Um, and I, I think, you know, pregnancy is, is, for example, one of those times where it's a time of great change. And I think there really is a great opportunity um, to help people quit smoking during during pregnancy, both because it's helping you know mom and baby, but also because of the impact um, of that change on uh, you know maybe mom's partner or family or social circle um, and potentially other uh, pregnant um, women or expectant parents uh, that they may be you know socialising with. Um, but before I go too deep into to smoking and, and pregnancy, um, you know. I think when it comes to quitting smoking, um, healthcare professionals are not taught well 
how to help people quit smoking. And I mean, maybe you can give me some input from from a midwife's point of view, but um, you know, in, in medical training, the only kind of teaching we were given on how to help people quit smoking was, you know, the five A's of smoking cessation, which is ask, advise, assess, assist, and arrange. Okay. And I can guarantee you that if you ask almost any doctor who's been out of med school for five years, they won't remember what all five A's are. Um, and, you know, if, if we as health professionals don't know how to, like, you know, give a, a structured or evidence-based program to help people quit smoking, how can we expect our, our clients or, or, or patients to know how to do it themselves? Um, yeah. And, you know, and that, that really, again, comes back to, to why I started on this, this journey with Biogwai is that I, I want to take the guesswork away from, from doctors, away from nurses, midwives, healthcare professionals. I want to take the guessing away from the smoker themselves and say, look, you don't need to go out there. You don't need to work out what the best uh, approach is. This is a structured program follow this program and we can't guarantee you success because there's no such thing as a hundred percent success rate but obviously it, yeah. it means you're far more likely to to successfully quit than if you just blindly go into quitting smoking as i think so many people do yeah no it's so true i need i haven't been taught ever i think how to help people to quit smoking i've given it a good go though <laughs> but, um <All> right <laughs> <laughs> you gotta try i um i do think pregnancy helps because you're anyway feeling terrible so um it is a good time to stop smoking um yeah no that's fantastic so tell us a little bit more then on what how does bygwai works and why do you think this might help with quit smoking quitting smoking sure. um so yeah so i mean i guess again kind of going back to, to how to quit smoking um i i fundamentally believe that smoking as a habit is made up of two parts. So there's a, a physical element or physiological element, um, and then there's a, a behavioral or psychological element to smoking. So uh, obviously nicotine is a, a very addictive substance. Um, you know, people go through significant withdrawal and cravings, and, and, and for a lot of people that is a driver of their smoking behavior. Um, but as much as that, that physical part or physiological part plays a role, there's also a significant behavioral or mental component to smoking, you know. Um, you know, are you smoking because you're stressed? Are you smoking because you're happy? You know, uh, I, are you smoking when you're out with your mates having a, a drink or a coffee? Um, are you smoking while you're at work because of the pressure that you're under there? Um, and I think no matter how you, you try to quit smoking, you need to address both the physical, physiological and mental and behavioral aspects to successfully quit. Um, and that's kind of how, how Baigwai is, is structured as well. Um, so we try and take a, a sort of a, a holistic or multimodal approach to quitting that focuses on both the physical and the, the mental aspects uh, of quitting smoking. Um, so from a, from a mental aspect, um, you know, it, it comes down to quite simple things like, you know, tracking your cigarettes or uh, logging a craving, uh, you know, having a journal or a diary that you can just jot down some thoughts. You know, even if it's just a little uh, two line message to yourself to say, you know, you're strong, you can do this today. Like, you know, if you smoke two less cigarettes today than you did yesterday, that's still progress. Um, and then along with that, we, we make use of um, cognitive behavioral therapy activities. Um, so CBT is, is a, a psychology intervention um, that has played a significant role in helping people understand how their, their thoughts impact their behavior and behavior impacts thoughts, um, as well as how to change those behaviors. Uh, and that really has been shown to, to be um, very useful and, and helpful uh, for a number of addictions, um, smoking being one of them. Um, and then on the, the sort of physical side, so um, we offer telehealth consultations uh, to, to our smokers uh, who uh, sign up for our premium program. And the idea is that that allows us to create a, a more tailored uh, 
plan or, or, or sort of treatment program for them um, and help them access uh, things like nicotine replacement therapy, so gum or patches, um, or medications such as uh, Welbutrin or Bupropion, um, as well as Champix, Varenicline, uh, all of which are medications that have been shown to significantly reduce the, the physical impact of trying to quit smoking, reducing your cravings um, and, and making you feel a lot better while you are trying to quit. Um, and, and, and as I said, really kind of increase that likelihood that you'll actually quit. Um, so that's the kind of fundamental basis of, of, of how, how Baigua works. Yeah, it's a beautiful, comprehensive approach. Um, mm. I can just imagine if you try to quit smoking to just have a bit of that that accountability and that guide and, and the different aspects that come to play. Um, and then also where you can be assisted, that, that must be extremely impactful. And um, what is your mm. experience so far with your app? So look, um, I'll say it, it's been challenging, but um, I think it goes without saying that if you're trying to tackle a problem like smoking, um, you know, it, it's never going to be an easy journey. It's not like we're creating Instagram or TikTok where, you know, people are, are keen to jump on the app every day and, and see what's happening. Um, you know, I think it's estimated that we have something like a billion smokers worldwide, um, you know, which is substantial. Um, and so, and I think we obviously all know the negative impact that, that smoking has you know, on our, on our health and well-being, uh, as well as our, you know, financial uh, finances. Um, but yeah, obviously helping people quit smoking is, is not an easy thing to do. And mm. what we have found is that, you know, like a lot of apps, people will, will download it, they'll sign up, they'll use it for a couple of days and then, you know, drop off. And, you know, for those people who are like, you know what, you might not quite be ready to, to take that next step. Um, but what we have found is for uh, our users or our smokers who, who do engage with the program, who, who make the time and effort to, to work through the CBT activities, to you know, diligently track their cigarettes and log their cravings, you know, we found some incredible success rates from that. Um, you know, for those who kind of meet the minimum criteria for engagement, we've been seeing success rates of about 75 to 80 percent in terms of their quit rate from from using the program. Now, I think it was Mark Twain who said that quitting smoking is the easiest thing in the world. I must have done it a hundred times. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to pretend that uh, my patients are, are any better than Mark Twain. Um, but I, I think the, the, the proof is going to be in the pudding, which ultimately is what actually happens in the long term. Um, so we've, yeah. we've only been running for uh, sort of just under a year now. Um, and so, you know, seeing that, that one of your users quits is, is great. But what's really important for us is that, is that person still smoke-free six months down the line? Are they still smoke-free a year down the line? Uh, and ultimately, how can we measure the positive impact that that change has on their life and that's obviously difficult um, but it's still early days and, and so far it's been enjoyable to to actually see how people engage with our program and and you know celebrate their successes with them uh, as well uh, so it's been a very rewarding experience in that respect wonderful and you've only been going for a year you say so well done for what you've done and achieved so far and obviously um, we are here to really promote um, this initiative and the app for our um, listeners. Um, so let's just move on to our specific niche. And that's our yeah. most of the time pregnant ladies. Hopefully also people that are wanting to become pregnant are listening because that is, it's even more advisable that you have stopped before you're pregnant. Um, you. And we have, while we're talking, been assuming that everyone knows the impact of smoking, but I just give you a little bit of free range. Let's just remember the impact of smoking and then more specifically on, on pregnancy because um, people do need to know that because that might be just that trigger that I need to to get going with something like the bye bye. No, completely. And uh, look, I agree with you. I think, you know, we, we see those or smokers see those sort of warning labels stuck on, on every box of cigarettes that they buy. Uh, but for the most part, that just blends into the background. Um, and I think... Exactly. You know, I think the thing that often most smokers are concerned about is is, is lung disease or, or lung cancer specifically. But, 
you know, from my side, the thing I, I worry the most about is actually cardiovascular disease, the impact that smoking is going to have uh, on your heart, okay, and of the blood vessels throughout your body, whether that's in your brain, in your kidneys, uh, in your limbs, in your eyes, you know, and I think that really is the point I'd, I'd love to, to drive home is that smoking and tobacco smoking specifically has a significant impact on the cardiovascular system. And that is really what we should be trying to, to educate all smokers about. Um, but specifically in something like pregnancy, again, you know, you've, if you've got a growing baby uh, in your womb, you know, the only way that that baby is, is staying alive is by a placenta, um, which is essentially just a, a bunch of blood vessels that are supplying your, your baby with life support in a way. Now, if tobacco is having a, an impact on the blood vessels in your heart or in your brain or your kidneys, it goes without saying that the blood vessels that are in the placenta, your baby's life support system, are going to be impacted by smoking. Um, and, and that's and that's not the only thing. And you know, the fact that you're reducing that blood supply means that you know your baby might not grow to to be as 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 big uh, as it would be if you weren't smoking. Um, you know, there's there's an increase in your in your risk of of bleeding both during pregnancy. Um, you know, before or say as you sort of go into into labour, and obviously after you've given birth as well. Um, and there's also a chance that that with that your risk of having um a, a miscarriage um is also much higher with pregnancy again because that life support system the placenta uh, is not going to be able to function as well as it should in somebody who's um who's smoking um but of course you know a pregnancy is not just about the the, the 40 weeks or 38 weeks from you know from, from from conception to birth it's also important to remember that the first year of life is is still a part of our care right and i think yeah. midwives particularly have been so great about emphasizing the you know the the first 365 days the first year of life um and i guess it even goes beyond that but if mom is if mom is still smoking or there's smokers in the house, that also has the potential to negatively impact baby's lungs uh, and their risk of of developing long term problems uh, with their lungs uh, in in the long run. Um, and so yeah, so those are just some of the, the you know the physical effects of smoking. But you know again, it's it's smoking's expensive. <laughs> you know, um, a, a pack of cigarettes these days costs you know, sort of upwards of 50 bucks for, for some of those things. And, wow. you know, if you're, if you're a pack a day smoker, that's thousands and thousands of rand you're spending on, on smoking. Now, uh, I've got a friend who's, who's, who's currently pregnant and I think she's due to give birth in the next month or so. And we were just doing a quick calculation for how much nappies cost. Um, and she was like, imagine if you are a smoker and you've got to be buying nappies for your baby. I mean, that, that's a serious expense. Um, and and so yeah, we ultimately we yeah. we want to try and reduce obviously the the, the physical impact um, uh, or the impact on the body of, of mom and baby and obviously the people around uh, them as well, but also highlight the fact that smoking is expensive, uh, and quitting smoking can probably be one of the best investments you can make for yourself as well. Absolutely, no, that's that's really great. Um, I love that. Mm. Um, so Kieran, what what I used to do. Um, in my with my antenatal care um, consultations and I still would do that if I if I would come in this um is tackle the mom and the partner because most of the time they come together and then I look at the 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 pregnant mommy from Yana she needs to stop, stop smoking but I always tell like now you you really need to stop smoking together um so um Thank and you. together you're also stronger I suppose but um yeah just that also the the element of co-smoking like um smoking in the house and all those things. So there's actually quite a lot of things that you can do to reduce the, the exposure to smoking to your baby. So the whole family mm -hmm. need to get on board, like don't smoke in the house, make it a smoke-free zone. Um, mm -hmm. And also um, I, I'd like to let them try visualize this thing because most people are quite aware of the impact of smoking on their bodies. I mean, just be honest, you feel it. You feel you can't run around the block like if you're not smoking, I suppose, you know, mm -hmm. and um um, so, and they're happy to live with those consequences and if, even maybe agree with, I'll, if I die a bit sooner, I would care. So I don't know what people think, but, um, 
if they start thinking every I, I yet have to come across someone that doesn't want really really the best for that baby that newborn baby if they see that they connect that that precious little soul that's growing there and then just imagine mm -hmm. you putting a cigarette in your mouth you you let that precious little thing smoke with you because all that goes through the placenta right to that baby that that's really crazy. is impactful um for for every mom and i've i really have seen actually that that's why pregnancy is such a powerful time for for women to really deal with this habit okay. and for partners you know, they need to listen to this as well and realize the impact um mm. yeah that is no, that's look, my exposure I, my experience yeah look i completely agree with you Margaret, and i think that that's why i was so excited to you know embark on on this project um, you know, w with the Sister Lillian Center and Sensitive Midwifery and, and obviously Network One Health as well, um, is that, you know, for us, we, we're obviously trying to make the the biggest impact, you know, for, I wouldn't say for the least amount of effort possible, but, you know, for the effort you, you put in, you want to try and, and have the greatest impact that you can. And I think, you know, as you've mentioned, pregnancy is this time of change. You know, you, your life is it's not the end of your life. It's just the end of your life as you know it. And you know that there's going to be so many things that are going to change when this baby arrives. And, you know, as you say, getting the partner as well as the expectant mom on the same page about what is best for, for both them and for their baby and for the people around them is, is really such an important point to emphasize because if we can convince them to work together to both quit smoking and to encourage those around them to try and either yeah. cut down or, or, or reduce, you know, the amount of, of cigarettes that they're smoking. Um, you know, th that's an opportunity where if we can just target, you know, a pregnant, uh, one pregnant mom, you know, with this, that's improving mom and mom's health, improving growing baby's health, partner, family, social circle, and again, other pregnant uh, or expectant parents around them as well. And that's why I feel that this is such a, uh, a valuable initiative because again, it's not just treating one person, it's treating a whole family and a growing family as well. Um, and, that, and that for me is, is really what, what makes this a, a worthwhile effort is that I know it's not just one person who's gonna benefit, it's gonna be a whole network of people around that, that pregnant woman that ultimately can yeah. benefit from making those changes. Yeah, and probably, hopefully, a future generation. I mean, you did that for yourself. You, you. I mean, mm. it's often um, it goes from if your your parents have done it, you might even instill some some habit forming in your children, um, and you've just cut that for yourself. So if you might have children, they won't have that baggage, you know. So you can yeah. stop a, a generational thing that's been going on. Um, mm. So yeah, it's beautiful. Let's just um, uh, come to the practicals of this, um, Kieran. Yeah. Um, yeah. where can people find this, this beautiful app of yours? Okay. Um, yeah, so look, so Baigwai is available on both the, the, the Google Play Store and the, the iOS um, or Apple App Store. Um, it's available for free to download, so you can go on today, find it. So uh, Baigwai, it's B-Y-E-G-W-A-A-I. Hopefully we can put a, a link in the, in the comments for um, this podcast. Um, but I think the, the, the exciting uh, opportunity here is that, you know, the, our program, as I say, is free to start. But I think the real value comes in, in our premium program where you can have access to a, a telehealth consultation, you know, whether it's with me or, or, or another doctor, um, you know, get a plan that, that really is, is personalized and tailored uh, to, to you as the individual. Um, and again, get access to, to things like smoking cessation medications so that you've actually got a quitting plan that actually is, it's made for you. It's not some generic standard plan. It's something that you know is going to work best for you. Um, and so the, the Baigwai for, for Bumps initiative, which um, is our collaboration between Baigwai, the Sister Lillian Center and Sensitive Midwifery, um, is that we, we want to try and promote access um, to, to Baigwai and we want to give away um, Baigwai premium to a number of expectant moms um, who are keen to get involved in this. And essentially it's gonna be very, very straightforward. We basically just want uh, moms who are smokers or expected moms or, or even moms who are planning to be pregnant, um, you know, to, to fill in the survey just so we can learn a little bit more about, you know, which of 
uh, sensitive midwifery and, and sister Lillian centers clients are smokers you know what the impact of smoking has been on their life so far and um, if you uh, complete our survey we will essentially do a, a lucky draw we will we, we will give, give away uh, 25 premium programs to to those that that answer uh, that survey um, and right now um, we are like heavily discounting our premium program it's a it's a new year it's new year's resolution so uh you know we've cut our prices sort of right down to, to even 300 rand for the premium program um but essentially we, we feel that the value of this program is is probably close to about 3000 rand for this program um but as i said that can be available uh to you moms for free uh all we would need you to do is just complete uh the survey just to learn a little bit more about you um and we'll also include a link to that survey uh, in the comments below as well wonderful yes i'm so excited about this um initiative so there you have it listeners there's an opportunity for you to um to contribute to the knowledge of the, the bigger body of knowledge. So if you are a smoker, please um, click the link and we will put the survey link in the show notes, but we also have it on our social media platforms and our newsletter. Um, so find that link and fill it in and then automatically you will find you'll get into a lucky draw um, to be one of the lucky ones to get it for free, the premium one. And please share it with anyone that you know that will benefit from this. Anyone in your family, friends that you know, they will they smokers they would love to stop um pass this on yeah mm. so the, so yeah that was us for today kieran thank you so much for for all you're doing keep up the good work and um, for finding us and for the lovely collaboration uh, hopefully some real good things will come from this thank you very much Marguerite. it's been great chatting to you i uh, really appreciate the opportunity to to be on the podcast and and chat to you um i'm, I'm glad that you know after the sort of few months that this is finally, you know, come and come that we've managed to make the, this initiative happen. Um, and yeah, really excited to, to continue working with you in, in the future. Uh, I, I truly believe that there's a, a great opportunity to uh, make an impact in the lives of, of pregnant women, uh, of their families, uh, and even moms who are, are planning to be pregnant, you know, whether it's just smoking, but, but in so many other capacities. And yeah, it's been great chatting to you. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Awesome. Thank you, Kieran. Chat later. Bye. Ciao. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, please share this with a friend who will benefit from this. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified whenever we release new videos like this on our channel. We'd love to stay in touch and keep you updated with all our latest content and resources to equip and empower you. So if you're a midwife or any type of birth and baby worker, go to sensitivemidwifery.co.za slash free gift. If you're a mom, visit sisterlillian.co.za slash free gift for more training and resources. That way we can keep you up to date when we release new episodes like this plus a few other bonuses. You can also find the links I just mentioned in the show notes. Remember, you're making a big difference because you are shaping the future of humankind. Thank